Hello everyone and this is the Ballet Libretto. In this series you are invited to come with me to explore the stories behind the world's most beloved ballets. This program is not only for ballet fans around the world but also for people who love a good story. The ballet art form has a history that spans over 400 years and at times it was political but always evolving, always complex and at the center of it ballet was and still is about the human experience. Today, we are going to continue the countdown of the top 10 most popular ballets in the world. Ranked at number 8 is La Bayadere, and luckily, I was able to find the libretto. Act 1. A long time ago, during the days of rural India, the wealthy, famous warrior Kshatriya Salore went hunting in the forest with other hunters. At a sign from Salor, the hunters run through the forest and get lost. Salor lingered for a time and ordered the fakir, Madhavaya, not to leave, so that he could find a few words to say to the beautiful Bayadere, Nakia, who lives in the pagoda nearby. Salor leaves and the doors of the pagoda open. Leaving the temple is the great Brahmin. Behind him, are monastic wise men, seers, priests, and gurus. From the pagoda are bayaders of the first rank. Preparations for the festival of fire are being made. The great Brahmin asks for the bayader Nakia. He cannot find her, and he wants her to start the festival with a spiritual dance. At last, Nakia appears under a veil. Illuminated by the reddish light of the torches, she attracts attention of everyone. The great Brahmin walks up to her, lifts her veil, and orders her to take part in the dances. Then the sounds of the bagpipes and a small guitar serve to accompany the graceful movements of the Bayadere. These movements become faster and more lively, and the orchestra positively thunders. The great Brahmin cannot take his eyes off of the beautiful Nakia. He walks up to her while she is dancing and proclaims his love for her. She pushes him back in horror and reminds him that he is a Brahmin, sworn to chastity and vows never to love him. The Brahmin is offended and decides to take vengeance on Nakia. Nakia tries to run away. She joins the other Bayadirs, fills her vase from the sacred pond, and gives drink to weary travelers and those who took part in the dance. Mada Yava continues his original dance and his fanatical flagellation. Nakia goes after him and offers water to cool him. He whispers to Nakia that Salor wants to see her. Nakia is delighted with the news. The ceremony ends and the Brahmins order the Bayadirs back into the temple. Salor enters with the Badayava, sits down on a pile of rocks, and anxiously awaits for the appearance of his beloved Nakia. Salor slowly approaches the window of the pagoda and knocks three times. The window opens and Nakia appears holding a guitar. Salor falls at her feet, then embraces her. They declare their love and devotion to each other. Salor wants Nakia to leave this place so they can be together, but she explains that she will always be a Bayadere and has been destined to be one since childhood. The great Brahmin appears in the doors of the pagoda. He sees the lovers embracing. In a burst of jealousy and wrath, he wants to run to them but holds back, promising vengeance. He hides, eavesdropping on their conversation, then sneaks out. Nakia asks Salor to promise her in front of the pagoda that he will always love her and only her. He promises, and she promises him that she will remain true to him for the rest of her life. Act 2 The Raja, Dagmanta, is sitting on pillows and tiger skin at his royal palace. He orders the Bayadares to entertain him and proposes a round of chess to one of the warriors. After the dances, the Raja sends for his daughter Gamzadi, who enters with her girlfriends. 
he tells her that today is the day she will be betrothed to Salor. In a few moments, Salor appears. When he enters, the Raja's daughter covers her face with a veil. Dogmanta tells Salor he has permission to marry his daughter. However, Salor explains he is not sure if he is ready. The Raja removes the veil off Gamzadi's face so Salor can look at her beauty. Salor is struck by the girl's beauty, but recalling his beloved Nakia, to whom he has sworn eternal love, he runs away. The Raja explains to Salor that he is a brave man, and he is sure a marriage between him and his daughter would make Salor happy. Salor is deeply troubled by the impending marriage. Perplexed, the Raja's daughter watches her betrothed, wondering what is causing him grief. Gamzadi figures out that Salor is not happy with the idea of them getting married. Salor tries to get out of the engagement, but the Raja doesn't take no for an answer. He orders Salor to marry Gamzadi in three days. Salor realizes he is trapped and feels devastated by this fateful command. A servant announces the arrival of the great Brahmin. The Brahmin whispers to the Raja that he has a secret, so the Raja dismisses everyone. After everyone leaves, the Brahmin and the Raja remain alone, except for the Raja's daughter, who hides behind the portier and listens to their conversation. In a lively narrative, the great Brahmin describes what happened the night before. He declares that Salor does not love Gemzadi, but adores the Bayadir Nakia with whom he is seen every night and wants to run away with her. Indignant of his future son-in-law's behavior, the Raja tells the great Brahmin of his intention to destroy Nakia. The Brahmin, wishing only Salor's death, is frightened at the thought of the serious danger to which he has exposed his beloved Bayadir and tells the Raja that her death will anger the gods. The Raja, however, will not hear of this, and announces to the Brahmin that tomorrow, during the celebration in honor of Bhadranada, Nakia will, as usual, dance with flowers. In one of the baskets of flowers, a serpent will be concealed, which will crawl out, frightened at the dancer's movements, and bite her, causing her death. At these words, the Brahmin's whole body shudders. Gamzadi, who has heard everything from behind the portier, wants to see the Bayadir and sends her slave girl to fetch her. The Raja, completely satisfied with the vengeance he had planned, leaves with the Brahmin. Gamzadi is worried. She wants to hear from the Bayadir herself that Salor loves her. The slave girl runs in with word of Nakia's arrival. Gamzadi looks at Nakia and finds her to be beautiful. She tells Nakia of her impending wedding and invites her to dance in her presence on that day. Nakia is flattered by such an honor. Gamzadi shows Nakia a picture of Salor and tells her she is betrothed to him. Nakia is devastated. She declares that Salor swore he would love her forever and she is certain he will never marry Gamzadi. Gamzadi insists that Nakia gives him up, but Nakia will never give him up. Gamzadi offers her diamonds and gold and tries to persuade her to go off to another land. Nakia seizes the jewels that the Raja's daughter is offering and throws them on the floor. Gamzadi beseeches the Bayadir to let her have Salor, but Nakia takes a dagger and rushes after her. The slave girl, who has anxiously followed the Bayadir's movements and intentions, defends her mistress with her body. Nakia, meanwhile, disappears from the palace. Act 2, Scene 2, takes place at the Raja's garden. In the distance stands the tower of the large pagoda of Megat Shada, which reaches almost to the heavens. In the background, the Himalayas are thinly covered with silvery snow. There is a great procession. The Brahmins march in, march in first, followed by 
the four classes of Bayadere's, the Pagoda servants, various Indian case, and others. The Raja, his daughter, Salor, and other rich Indians are brought in on palanquins. The Raja takes his place on a platform and orders that the festival begin. At the end of the dances, the Raja commands the beautiful Nakia to come in and orders her to entertain the public. Nakia comes out of the crowd to dance. Salor, placed near the Raja's throne, recognizes his beloved. Hardly able to conceal his wrath, the great Brahmin watches him with suppressed malice. During the Bayadere's dance, the Raja's jealous daughter uses all her strength to conceal her state of mind. Smiling, she comes down from the balcony and orders a basket with flowers to be presented to the graceful Nakia. Nakia takes the basket and continues to dance, admiring the pensive Salor. Suddenly, a snake crawls out of the basket and strikes the Bayadere in the heart. Its bite is deadly. Continuing her dance, the beautiful girl appeals to Salor for help, and he embraces her. She falls and dies. Act 3 takes place in Salor's room in the Raja's palace. Salor is walking around like a madman. The Madhavaya watches him with a look of pity, then orders snake charmers to be brought in to drive the evil spirit from Salor's body. But he dismisses the dancers. Gamzadi enters with her attendants. She is, she is magnificently dressed in gold and pearls. She sits down next to him and caresses him, trying to attract his attention. Salor at last revives and takes her hand. At this moment, the melancholy strain of the Bayadere's song is heard. The shade or ghost of the weeping Nakia appears on the wall. Salor trembles. He asks Gamzadi to leave and assures her they will get married tomorrow. Salor goes over to the wall, but the shade is gone. It appears only at moments when his imagination is inflamed. In Act 3, Scene 2, Salor decides to smoke some opium. After a while, he hears soft music and sees an enchanted place. Then he falls asleep. Shades or the ghosts of Bayadere's appear to him one by one by one. After the Kingdom of the Shades dance, Salor wakes up and wonders if he was dreaming. Servants of the Raja bring in expensive gifts and tell Salor that all preparations are completed for his wedding to the Raja's daughter. Act 4 begins with preparations for the royal wedding between Salor and, Gen and Gemzadi. Warriors enter together with Brahmins, Bayadars, and guests. Gamzadi appears, followed by her father. When Salor appears, the Raja orders the festival to begin. During the dances, a shade pursues Salor and reminds him of his vow. Gamzadi does everything in her power to please Salor, who grieves the whole time because he can't stop thinking about Nakia. The great Brahmin takes the bride and groom by the hands. As the ceremony begins, the sky darkens, lightning flashes, thunder rumbles, and it begins to rain. At the very moment when the Brahmin takes the hands of Salor and Gemzadi, an earthquake erupts. Lightning strikes and the hall collapses. Covered in ruins are the Raja, his daughter, the great Brahmin, and Salor. Through the rain, the peaks of the Himalayas are visible. Nakia's ghost glides through the air. She tenderly looks at Salor, who lies dead at her feet. Labayadere means temple dancer in French, and the ballet premiered at the Imperial Ballet in St. Petersburg, Russia, which is now known as the Marinsky Theater on February 4, 1877. That time was the end of the Romantic period and the beginning of classical ballet. It has the romantic elements of the Ballet Blanc, 
or the white ballet because Act Three's Kingdom of the Shades is performed by a large corp de ballet dressed in white. And it had the classical element of the shorter tutus. During the Romantic period, the tutus reached below the knees, whereas during the classical era of ballet, the tutus were cut at or above the knees. Another interesting fact is La Bayadere was written by the librettist Sergei Nikolaevich Kudakov and the choreographer Marius Petipa. Marius Petipa is one of the most famous ballet choreographers in the history of ballet, and I am certain that I am going to talk about him again in future episodes. He was born in Marseille, France in 1818. His mother, Victorine, was an actress and a drama teacher, and his father, Jean-Antoine Petipa, was also a ballet master and choreographer in Lyon, Marseille, and Bordeaux. His ballets have been lost. We don't have much details on them, including the story or the choreography notes or the music score. Jean Petipa started giving Marius Petipa ballet lessons starting at the age of seven. And at first, Marius resisted because he didn't want to take ballet. But eventually, he fell in love with it and he started performing in his father's ballets when he was nine years old. Eventually, Marius Petipa moved where he was able to find work. So he lived in Bordeaux for a while, then he moved to Madrid and worked as a principal dancer, and then he moved to St. Petersburg where he worked as a principal dancer until he retired in 1859 when he was 41 years old. Then he was promoted to choreographer and worked and lived in Russia until he died. As a matter of fact, Petipa's children were all born in Russia. La Bayadere was created for a benefit performance in tribute to the most popular prima ballerina at that time, Ekaterina Vazem. She was born in Moscow in 1848 and moved to St. Petersburg when she was 18 to train at the Imperial Theater School. Since this was considered to be a Russian ballet, it was inspired by two things. One, the story was largely influenced by the opera Aida. Petipa had just finished choreographing the Russian production of Aida before he started working on La Bayadere, which, was, which kind of explains how he co-wrote the libretto. Now, if you are unfamiliar with the story, Aida takes place in Egypt, and it tells the story of Aida, an Ethiopian princess who was kidnapped and enslaved, and she is in love with the military commander Radamus. Radamus is torn between his love for Aida and his loyalty to the king of Egypt. The king's daughter is in love with Radamus, but he doesn't love her. So the love triangle in both stories are identical. It took Petipa six months to choreograph the ballet. We know that Petipa and Vazem argued over one of her dance routines. And Petipa had a hard time with the set designers over the special effects. Which leads to another interesting fact about the ballet. The ballet has been restructured and re-choreographed numerous times, depending on the budget of the ballet company. If there was no money for certain effects, it got taken out of the performance. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. <laughs> I know I did. <laughs> I am doing this in celebration of a new ballet that will premiere in New York City in April 2022 titled The Prince of Barakova. 
The Prince of Barakova is a romantic ballet that will be danced to rock music instead of classical music. It tells the story of a prince who takes a trip around the world during the season of Lent to find his soulmate. If you would like to make a donation towards the production of the ballet, the Kickstarter campaign will be postponed from October 3rd to October 17th, 2021, where you can donate as little as $5. I have to push it back because the campaign won't be ready by October 3rd. If you would like to purchase the ballet libretto, my book, The Journal of a Ballet Librettist, will be available on Amazon Monday, November 15th, 2021. Also, I am running a contest that started at the beginning of the ballet libretto season. If you are the first person to correctly guess what is number one on this countdown, what is the world's most popular ballet, you will win free tickets, two free tickets, to see the Prince of Barakova in New York City. You will find the answer during the last episode of the series, which will be posted on Sunday, November 21st, 2021. To enter into the contest, email your answer at nightglowonline at gmail.com with the subject ballet contest. Thank you to my subscribers. And if you are new to this channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Click like and share. Thanks for watching and see you next time on the Nightglow Entertainment channel here on YouTube.